This is the story of a serial killer Wheeler Weaver dubbed the tagged killer who lured his victims in with dating apps before strangling them. His focus was black ladies who were sex workers or homeless or just in need of money. He would finally be apprehended by a simple trick by one of his family's victims and the cops. Wheeler Weaver was born on April 20, 1996 and grew up in the well-to-do neighborhood of Seven Oaks in Orange, New Jersey. He comes from a family of law enforcement officials employed in the region, his stepfather is a detective in the neighboring town of East Orange and his uncle is retired from the Newark Police Department. Khalil Wheeler Weaver didn't strike most people as a cold-blooded killer. He was neatly groomed and well-dressed, yet he had a deeply concealed dark side. Several members of his family are law enforcement officers. Late in 2016, the 20-year-old worked as a security guard at a hotel and a supermarket. The first victim of Khalil Wheeler Weaver was 19-year-old Robin West. According to her mother, West experienced mental health difficulties. At the time of her disappearance on August 31, 2016, West was mostly supported by sex work. The day following her disappearance, police responded to calls of a fire in an abandoned residence. When they entered the residence, they discovered West's burned remains. Robin West's body was found in this badly burned home in Orange, New Jersey on September 1st. Her remains located only after the fire was put out. Her body was so extensively burnt that it was not possible to identify her until two weeks later, using dental records. Due to the condition of her remains, it was impossible to ascertain the reason of her death. Wheeler Weaver told authorities that he had gone to a restaurant with West and then dropped her off at an abandoned house two blocks from where she was found when he was later questioned about her murder. But just weeks after the discovery of West's death, another lady vanished under suspicious circumstances. Joanne Brown, who was 33 years old in 2016, was experiencing homelessness and mental health issues. On October 22, 2016, she was last seen entering Wheeler vehicle, Weavers, and she was reported missing later that month. The remains of Brown were discovered in a different abandoned house on December 5, 2016. Tape concealed her mouth and nostrils. The eventual cause of death was determined to be suffocation. Sarah Butler, a 20-year-old sophomore at New Jersey City University, was Wheeler Third Weavers and final victim, slain on November 22, 2016. She was known to be a great dancer who traveled around with her group to places, she is said to be sweet, soft, loving and caring. Butler was at home for Thanksgiving when she met Wheeler Weaver on the social networking application Tagged, an app that was more like a dating place where single people meet each other. Prior to Butler's decision, the two had intended to go on a date, but ultimately did not. However, when Wheeler Weaver offered her $500 for sexual services, she consented. Before their date, Butler texted him jokingly, you're not a serial murderer, right? Butler informed her mother that she would be meeting a friend and borrowed her vehicle. Without hesitation, her mother said farewell. This was the final time anyone saw Sarah Butler alive. Her body was discovered on December 1, 2016, in West Orange's 400-acre Eagle Rock Reservation. On November 15, 2016, just prior to the murder of Butler, another woman named Tiffany Taylor reported to authorities a near-fatal contact with Wheeler Weaver. Taylor, who was 34 years old, was many months pregnant, and was currently homeless. She relied on sex labor to survive. She told officials that he had agreed to pay her for sexual services. They departed in Wheeler's automobile after meeting at a motel in Elizabeth, New Jersey. However, he then donned a ski mask and proceeded to handcuff and duct tape Taylor's mouth. In the rear of the vehicle, he raped and strangled her until she lost consciousness. Taylor, upon awakening, was able to convince her captor to drive her back to the motel. She ran inside a room and closed the door as soon as she arrived. Wheeler Weaver was gone by the time police arrived after she dialed 911. What, what, what injuries do you have? Look at my face and the duct tape. For the what? For the duct tape, my face. When did he duct tape you? Huh? In the car? In the car. So you let him duct tape you or what happened? I just need to know. He put the handcuffs on me first. He choked me out and I choked me with my hand. 
What was all happened? All happened in the car. Yeah. Where were you parked at the time? Um. The gas station over there. No, it was by the gas station. No. It was by the it gas station. It was in this car. It was in this car. So he took the duct tape with him. Had to get. And he just ran away. Ran away. They would not believe what she told them and did not do much about it. Even though she was handcuffed and showed some other evidence, he would go ahead to kill Sarah Butler the following week. Technology, you know how it is. It's about to be 2020. Like common sense. I don't I don't understand. I I don't even understand how the some of the stupid things that he did. It's like he wanted to get caught. I was in the car, I had one handcuff on, I could have easily just put it around him and push with my foot and try to rip his head off. I could have. <sighs> that was plan B anyway. I really hate that guy. I really do. Meanwhile, Sarah Butler's family and friends took matters into their own hands in an effort to obtain justice. Including tagged, Butler's sister knew the passwords to her social media accounts. She discovered Wheeler Weaver by searching through Butler's communications from the time she vanished after logging into her account. His username was Lil Yacht Rock. The sister of Butler created a fake tagged profile and contacted Montclair police to determine the next steps. Together, they planned an undercover operation. Sarah Butler's sister had been able to find Wheeler Weaver's page on tag dating site via his username and started chatting with him, he took the bait and planned on meeting with her. On December 6, 2016, Wheeler Weaver arrived at the place he had agreed to meet his date, only to find undercover police officers waiting for him. These led to the discovery of multiple damaging pieces of evidence, including searches conducted by Wheeler Weaver that proved he had lied to detectives about his location at the time the three ladies disappeared. His internet searches included how to make homemade poisons to murder humans and what chemical could you put on a rag and hold to a person's face to induce instant sleep. After tracking Wheeler Cell Weaver's phone, authorities could place him at the abandoned house containing West's body which was set on fire in September 2016. His phone records also revealed that he had initially driven away but then went back to watch the building burn. Wheeler Weaver was charged with three charges of murder, one count of attempted murder, aggravated arson, desecration of human remains, aggravated sexual assault, and kidnapping in February of 2017. He pleaded not guilty to three counts of murder and attempted murder. So the suspects say they are surprised. Sir, surprise is a, is a loose word. I'm flabbergasted. Beyond belief. Why do you do that? Why do you State versus Khalil Wheeler Weaver. A security guard at a shop right in Union Township said nothing in Judge Wiggler's courtroom as he was indicted. He was plea of not guilty on all charges. He was first picked up by authorities in early December. Today we uh, arraigned Mr. Wheeler Weaver on the indictment charging him with uh, three murders and one attempted murder. Um, and he entered his plea of not guilty. We scheduled a court date in May to uh, continue the process and move forward towards a trial. Khalil Wheeler Weaver, the so-called tagged killer, had his day in court in December 2019. A jury convicted him on 11 counts, including three counts of murder and desecration of human remains, attempted murder, two counts of aggravated sexual assault, aggravated arson, and kidnapping. Dash 547. As to count one, charging the defendant with the murder of Robin West, what is your verdict? Guilty. As to count two, charging the defendant with desecrating human remains of Robin West, what is your verdict? Guilty. As to count three, charging the defendant with aggravated arson, what is your verdict? Guilty. As to count six, charging the defendant with kidnapping of what is your verdict? Guilty. As to count seven, charging the defendant with attempted murder of what is your verdict? Guilty. As to count eight, charging the defendant with aggravated sexual assault while committing another crime, what is your verdict? I think that it was it was a, it was great. It was a good win for everybody who had lost a little level one and so forth. And what puzzled me so bad, he didn't even show any, you know, remorse. 
He just sat there like it was, I don't know, he's, he's very strange, very strange. But I'm glad that they came up with their fifth verdict. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very pleased with it. She gonna always be begun from us. You know, with birthdays, holidays, but you know, this is some, some closure. Yes, I would have to say so.